Okay, so here we are at, at, at our wellhead. Um, so you, you were able to see the generator running before and you saw the compressor head attached to the motor with the belt that was producing compressed air. We're sending the, the, the compressed air underground through, uh, you know, right, right alongside of the, the water line that brings water up into the cistern. And so we're actually using conventional household PEX. So if you can see right here, this, 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 this little blue hose, um, household PEX is rated for 100, I don't know, 100 PSI or so, I think maximum. Um, and it makes a really inexpensive air hose, airline. And so what we're doing is we're using this PEX underground inside the same trench that we had to excavate to keep the water that flows out of the well below the frost line to get it into the house. And the benefits of a compressed air pump like this are that the, the, the PEX airline or other air bulk air hose is typically 50, you know, it's typically half the price or less of even inexpensive um, UF or below grade rated electrical cable. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes the cost of, of running, it makes the cost of quote unquote powering the pump substantially less at any distance that you're going to be um, um, from, your, from your power source compared to a, a, a typical, say, 240 volt uh, a well pump. Um, we are lucky here in that our well is only located about a hundred and maybe 30 feet or so from where our cistern is, but the advantage of a compressed air pump of this type, in fact, I believe its biggest advantage and why it's extremely popular in Australia where it was designed is that it has, I shouldn't say it has no limits on how far it will pump water because of the nature of, of how it works. It's capable of pumping water up, up several hundred feet vertically, um, possibly substantially more, and also several miles horizontally. Um, I believe, uh, uh, um, I was told that it routinely can pump water up four or 500 foot uh, um, um, hillsides and then two or three miles in the outback um, to, take, to take water to really remote sites where they, where they have a need, such as livestock and things like that. Um, the well that we have is, uh, is, is, is extremely good. It produces between 10 and 13 gallons per minute and it does so at only 62 feet of depth. Um, so we were able to get a high, produce, high production well that is, has virtually no rust and no calcium and, ver and very low amount of minerals. And so it produces um, a nearly inexha inexhaustible water supply for us that we can utilize for all kinds of agriculture and then give it right back into the stream that probably fills the same aquifer after we're done with it. So now we're inside the sunroom um, um, of, of the common house and we're looking at our temporary setup that, that allows us to send the water into the well. And um, you can actually see our whole water system here. It's actually really quite simplistic. This is a canister filter that pre-filters the water from the cistern before it flows into this uh, uh, pressure pump made by SureFlow. Um, this is a really common, uh, it's a really common pressure pump. They're typically available online for about $250. They're specifically made for, for RV use and they provide uh, consistent 45 PSI pressure up to uh, three or four gallons per minute, which is plenty for a shower or a sink. Uh, only when you're running two or three uh, uh, water sources at a time do you start noticing the pressure drop. Um, I, ideally, we would have a pressure tank in, in, in line with this, with this pump so the pump does not have to run as often as it does now, but it's just it's something that we're going to do in the future to improve upon it. And you can see this, you can see this, this large inch and a, and a quarter diameter black pipe coming out of the floor. This is the line itself that comes from the well and flows up through this, through this clear hose so we can, so we can visibly see it working. And it goes into the cistern that's on the other side of this wall. 
We've got a th we've got a thermocouple probe right there, so we can t test the water inside the cistern for a temperature, so we can see if it's getting dangerously cold at night, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you can actually see that the outgoing air line from the generator and then the incoming water line from the well right here, and the purpose of this little contraption here that I designed is to filter the water before it goes into the well so we have virtually no risk of contaminating um, the incoming water no matter what were to happen. Say hypothetically um, the compressor head, you know, say the piston scored and started allowing a little trace amount of oil to come through to, to, to come through the compressor head and start working its way through the airline. Um, uh, we also didn't want there to be any, you know, we just wanted to redu reduce the risk of there being anything potentially getting to our well. So what we have here I'm I let some, I, what I did was I let the residual air that stuck, that, that remains pressurized in the system uh, I, just, I just released the air um, so you can see now, if the generator is running, you would see um, you, you, would see, you would see the water in here always agitating. And so what's happening is, is we have a water bath. There's a couple inches of water that is always inside of this filter housing. So the compressed air flows through this water bath and bubbles. And the idea is the water will, will help to scrub the, the incoming air of any, of any particulates that may make itself through the compressor head itself. Um, and considering the compressor head is, is located pretty close to a motor that is, that is burning anything, um, I like the idea of being able to kind of scrub any particulates out of the water. And so after the, the air goes through this water bath, I have a 5 micron charcoal filter uh, in line right above it that I am using to kind of po polish the air. And so what winds up happening is, while the compressor head is running, you can you can actually open this valve and you can smell the air that's coming through, and it actually smells really fresh. It doesn't actually smell like anything. So what that does is that tells me that we're taking a lot of the a lot of the potential contaminants out of the compressed air. This is how we get the air through the. This is this is how, this is how we clean the air before we send it to the well. This is how we get it out of the well into the tank. This is how we take it out of the cistern and pressurize it for the house. This large thing right here that is quite a mess is our temporary uh, setup of our hot water collection tank. And I do emphasize the temporary part of, uh, of, of the temporary part of it all. We're eventually going to build a enclosure that has a operable lid so at any time you can open the lid and you can see all of our heat exchangers which we designed ourselves uh, that are inside the tank allowing us to to um, utilize the heat that's that's stored inside the water that's heated from the generator and from our future uh, evacuated solar collector that we're going to hopefully put up before winter and you can see how we heat the water for the house and I can show you briefly kind of a makeshift heat exchanger that we made a while ago. And this is just a 3 8 inch copper coil that uh, you can you buy the copper itself in a coil already. And if you have a, if you don't mind spending an hour, you can use zip ties to, to stack it vertically like this. And um, with really simple compression fittings or these these really fun new, um, shark bite fittings that I think are fantastic. They can let you connect directly from copper to PEX or any one of several different, ty different types of pipe to make your connections. And this little, this little dinky heat exchanger right here is what we're going to use to put the hot water, is to put hot water into this larger tank from our solar hot water collectors when, when we install them on the roof. And we have a much larger one of these that's inside the tank right now that we use to heat all the water for the house.